Sandstone Canyon. It's all very brittle and sketchy. And I found that out the hard way. Okay. So I have to take extra care. But the rock formations are very cool in here. Adventure is afoot in eastern Utah. It's currently late April 2022, and I took off the past couple weeks because of a health issue back home with my family. Everyone's okay, I'm keeping in close contact with them, and I do appreciate your kindness and concern. During my trip to Pennsylvania, Shannon and the vehicles were based in Durango, Colorado, and we chose Durango because that's where I flew my son Cole out of last year. There's a campground right near the airport and logistically it just made a lot of sense. It was a little bit of a detour, but Durango's in the southwest corner of Colorado. We are very familiar with the town and we knew that we could pop right back into Utah when I got back. Unfortunately, as soon as I got back to Colorado, literally in the airport parking lot, we discovered that the drive belt was shredded in the Land Rover. This meant that the cooling fan wasn't turning, nor was the alternator. So last week was devoted to overnighting a new belt and installing it at our site at the campground. There were some extremely cold temperatures in Colorado, colder than we faced all year, so we think that's what caused the old belt to disintegrate but I got it fixed fairly easily and we're back on the road. We found this campsite last night with a little help from the iOverlander app. And it's in a beautiful canyon setting on BLM land. A lot of different colored rocks, mostly sandstone. Cell service is non-existent, but privacy is great. Haven't seen a soul back here. Lots of veggies, oh. a bit of meat, bean pasta. Feeling good, love. Mm. You want some cheese on that, love? Cheese makes everything better. Mm. Nah, no. It's right here. I know, I know, I'm good. Okay. Unusual, but okay. Shannon and I are rolling and en route to get my Jeep Barngy in the next two or three weeks. But right now, we broke camp and we're on our way to visit our friends Kevin, Sarah, and Caroline. I've been wanting to show Kevin the truck before I part with it and maybe go on a run together. We don't have anything formally planned, he just knows that we're coming by. So this week, I'm sure, we'll geek out and do camera work together. Is the rear fog light working? Is that helping? Um, it's the red light that's on. The other light is not on. Yeah, yeah, the bright red light. There should be only one, and uh, it should help you see me in conditions like this. Yep, I can see you quite well. It's actually good and bright.
me see here. This isn't product placement. I actually like Cheez-Its. We are in Ashley National Forest in Northern Utah. I'm at a higher elevation at 7,400 feet. So it's uh, a little bit colder than usual. It's supposed to warm up and get into the 70s this week, at least down in the valley. Right now though, it is chilly and this is a far cry from the desert that we spent most of the winter in. But man, I love the National Forest of Northern Utah and this secluded campsite right here is a taste of how lush and verdant this area can be. Shortly after getting started, I encountered this couple out touring in their pickup truck and they were blocked by a fallen tree. So I pulled up in the Land Rover and offered to help move it out of the way. It's up in Oregon? Yeah, up oh. in Portland, all ready to go with a new engine. And it's just a 2013 Wrangler. I was at first, it was a really white knuckle Adjustment. experience. Hey, um, this should probably pull away pretty easily. It's not pretty, but it's enough. That is it. I'm at about 9,500 feet in elevation. And at this point, the patches of snow are becoming too frequent. So I need to err on the side of caution and turn around. When exploring solo, you have to know when to say when. And that's hard. It's usually sooner than you think it is. Given that my tires are lame and I don't have a self-recovery winch, it's best to go back down the mountain at this point. I'll find a lower elevation track to explore. It's 4 p.m. It's going to take me a couple hours to get out of the mountains and get back to base camp. So I'm heading out now. I'm going to make my way to Shannon because I told her that I'd probably be back for dinner tonight. Tomorrow, I'm definitely spending the night in the field and I think that I'm gonna have Kevin with me. So it should be interesting. The truck did well again today. It really excels out here in the back country. So far, it made it through all of Arizona, all of, no, no, it made it through a corner of Colorado, and it made it most of the way through Utah. We are well on our way to the Pacific Northwest. This is a nice campsite. to spend the night in it or uh, yeah I'm glad you said that because I need to get my uh, 
slats that go up there. Yeah, this is definitely seat of your pants. What year is the beast? 1980. 1980 Land Cruiser troop carrier with a V8 conversion. Chevy. Yeah, Ramjet 350. Cool. Fuel injected. At the end of the track, Kevin and I found this massive sink, the bottom of which was filled with snow and featured two gated mine entrances. I was reluctant to include this video clip because as I was watching I was thinking, man, we are such dorks. Two grown men acting ridiculous in the snow. I wasn't even aware of Kevin's lame attempt at a snowball until days later when I sat down to edit this. I'm, I'm are... sure that platform can support your weight. I hope so. Just, it's like climbing on ice. You just gotta spread your weight out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Success! We're gonna do this in two steps. We're gonna sear it, <clears throat> pull it off, and then cut it into really thin strips, and then really season it. Warm it back up one last time. And... All right. Oh, my back. 
This table is much too short. <laughs> oh. Now we're gonna slice this up nice and thin. That's a tender flank steak. Yeah, generally I would have sour cream and cheese, but I was just blasting through. Honestly, this is great. Simple is good, especially around camp. Plus, we get to enjoy the core flavors even more. That's it. It was a good day exploring more of this beautiful national forest with Kevin, and I have to say it is nice having a second vehicle along. We ran across a snow patch here in the valley, and I don't think if I had been alone that I would have attempted to push through it. I'm so accustomed to traveling solo and erring on the side of caution all the time that it's a refreshing change of pace to be able to let my guard down just a little bit. We wrapped up the evening sitting and chatting by his propane fire, and then around 10 p.m. we called it a night. Kevin retreated to the troopy, and here I am in my dome tent. It's a cold one tonight, for sure, and all I could think about, for some reason, is RNG's gasoline heater. Sure, that heater's never been that reliable, but at least right now I'm excited to give it another go. <sighs> I could see my breath. No, I can't, not really. The next morning coffee was made, we spent a little time hanging out around camp, and then we were off to do more exploring.
broken hearted, but no three wheelers allowed. <laughs> oh man. That's the most specific sign I've ever seen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wonder what year that was put up. Sorry, folks. No three wheelers. <laughs> Couple of gray beasts. Yeah. Mine looks really blue next to yours, though. Well, yours looks like a well cared for piece of machinery, and this looks like an abandoned vehicle. We got another great campsite tonight. Uh, this one is in a valley. We've got mountains to the east and the west and we're right up against the river. Well, we had to explore a little bit to finally settle on this one. There's a few other options that were just out of reach of the river. Yeah. And finally came back to this thing right here and it is well worth it. I love sleeping to this sound right here. You can bottle that up yeah. all day long. How many times have you been out in the beast? Well, I guess this is technically uh, its maiden voyage in its current um, setup yeah. with its new yeah. paint job and all. We did a quick run, not quick, we did a 6,000 mile round trip run to Expo West and Expo East, but this is the first time it's really been on dirt and it was awesome. Based on its performance over the past couple days, um, is there anything, any improvements that you need to prioritize? Uh, definitely need the air compressor so I yeah. can <laughs> yeah. be a little more liberal on my PSI. You know, we're running around at 18 today and just jarring your teeth out. So I'd love to take it down a little bit lower. So probably end up with that sooner than later. And then, you know, just fix things as is needed. Um, there's definitely some steering linkage that needs some tightening up. I've got some new tie rods and things like that. So yeah, just a little at a time and enjoy it while we're shaking it down and figuring it out. All right. So I'm going to call that a wrap for the week. Oh, a moth just flew by. It ruined, you ruined my shot. <laughs> ruined the shot. <laughs> That's it. Come Cut. on, man. Start over. We're shooting here. Stupid moth. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call that a wrap for the week. But before I end this episode, a couple shout outs. First, I want to give a shout out to Sonoran Rovers in Tucson, Arizona for sourcing my 1991 Defender 110 high capacity pickup truck. I'm not going to have it for too much longer. I'm going to switch back to RNG when we get up to Portland. But the truck has been extraordinary. It hasn't been perfect. I've been fixing drive belts and whatnot but um it keeps chugging along quite literally and yeah. it's been great so uh, so special thanks to sonoran rovers and also a shout out to kevin for being a rad host and for joining me on this week's adventure if you don't already follow kevin sarah and caroline check them out at lifestyle overland on youtube i'll put the link to their channel in the description for this video just as a reminder, my detailed GPS data is available to Patreon subscribers, and also campsites and points of interest are available on the Thatch app for iOS and Android. I'll put a link to those two things in the YouTube description as well. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch up with you again next week. Now we have to wait for 20 seconds uh, because I use the ambient background noise for the uh, end screen. Has it been 20 seconds yet? No. <laughs> <laughs>